um, Assistant Professor Dr. Hans-Joachim Schramm, Assistant Professor at the Vienna University of Economics and Business and External Lecturer at Copenhagen Business School. He holds a master's degree in economics from Humboldt University in Berlin and a doctoral degree from Dresden University of Technology. Being a forwarding agent by profession and secretary general of Internationaler Verband der Tarifführer. Um, now I'm doubting my own German pronunciation. IVT, Organization of Tariff and Transport Export Experts. Main focus of his research and teaching activity is about international transport and logistics management, controlling in logistics and transportation companies, as well as economics and policy issues in sea, air, rail, and road transport markets. He authored several papers and monographs and contributed to the peer review process of a number of journals and has been visiting lecturer at universities in Finland, Sweden, Denmark, France, Belgium, Hungary, and China. Joachim, the floor is yours. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, then it's, uh, I do not have to put it in. Yeah, thank you, Jan. Um, thank you, David, for giving the opportunity of such a huge audience. So actually, you uh, see, I'm, I'm not, not quite in the topic. I'm a freight forwarder by profession. I'm economist, and I'm teaching, mostly teaching customs issues and so on. Um, actually, as I'm an economist, um, I make always such, um, pose almost such funny questions like, who takes most of uh, IO certification? A small question and a big impact, yeah? So I want to share with the next slides what I have done so far in this respect. I, well, I want to make a survey, and so far I made the first steps getting the audience together and having a first view on these people or on the companies who are I.O. at Austria. Yeah? So far, if there's a question upcoming, so far I didn't start a survey, but I want just to find out whether it's really a topic. Yeah? And I see here in the audience and also with the other talks here, it's really a hot topic to know what actually the persons who apply for, whether they, what they think about the I.O. Because we have this VCO safe framework and there are lot, lots of guidelines and so on and there are lots of uh, benefits posted. But I really I have the feeling that's not all. There are some other motives to get I.O. The agenda is as follows, some introduction I've already made, then maybe background I can really skip because this is a knowledge audience. Um, then maybe more about my data sampling. Some results on the EU level um, and my focus on Austrian uh, perspective and conclusions. And by the way, if you wonder about the picture on the right hand side, uh, we at VU, we are probably the biggest business school at Europe. I always say at Europe, maybe in the world. We have about 25,000 25, students and we got a new campus of about 100,000 square meters. And also we have a building of Sarah Hadid. This is our um, lecture, no, uh, learning center, so the library is just turned by 90 degrees. Yeah? So if you, and it looks likely the same as the Aliyev Center yesterday, yeah. I can say. <laughs> so the background is, uh, is as follows. Of, co of course, we are talking about I.O., so I'm, we are just in this uh, down right sector, a uh, quarter of possible legislation or volunteer initiatives coming along with security with nine, and introduced before and after 9-11. And it's part of the uh, VCO safe framework. Um, so what I did so far is um, there's the, in the EU, there's a tax suite IO database very easily accessible. It consists of about, at the moment, of about 12,000 IOs and you can get the data on those IOs, on the status, who got its status, the name of the company, where they got it, and um, yeah, actually one drawback maybe is uh, it's only those companies who really agreed on disclosing their, their name. So there are some other com uh, companies who got the status, but they are not posted there. Yeah? I don't know for what reason they would not like to post it because it's a, it's 
some sort of advertisement, I feel. But anyway, there's a delta in the, in the data. Well, in the case of Austria, I also made further inquiry in order to characterize the companies. It's about, for example, uh, annual turnover, number of employees, export-import quotas. You see on the lower left-hand side the sources. So it's Credit Reform, that's a uh, company who is in credit risk, a credit risk agency. They are always calling the companies up and uh, ask for information, and some companies offer them information. Most of the companies offer them information because they think, yeah, okay, then I get a better credit rating. Yeah. Others are Bureau van Dijk and Dun and Bradstreet. The real problem about here is that Austria is a small country, and of course the companies could be very small. So in my sample, I have companies with one person, with one, one employee. I have companies with several thousand employees, and I have companies which are actually part of a holding company or even larger entity. So sometimes it's really, really hard to get this data because they are all limited companies at all. So nothing up about shares and on the stock exchange. So need, no need for actually publishing it, their data. Oh. Um, yeah, some, maybe some results on the, on the EU level. So end of 2013, so I took the, the data was, a, uh, the data, I just took all the data of um, statuses acquired until end of uh, 2013. Um, there are about 35% uh, uh, of all the certificate holders are from Germany, followed by Netherlands, France, Italy, and Poland. Germany, you can see here on the, on the right hand side, Sorry, that was the, was the wrong slide. So we can, we can go for maybe first for the, uh, for the countries. So we have, for example, here, you see the, the most, most of the IOs are from Germany. Yeah. Today, Austrian have now maybe, a, if we could say, a market share of about 2%. Two, two yeah. These are about uh, 250 companies. Maybe getting back to the, the slide before. That's the overview, actually. So um, these are about 12,000 IAO certificates holders are registered. Um, even more, if you ask a European community about official figures, you get maybe a, a little bit more. Those are those who are not want to be posted in the uh, in the database. Yeah? Um, when it comes on the type of IAO we have in the European community, you know, we have about three forms. So that's IOF, the full program then S, only security, and C, only for customs issues. And when we look on that, in the beginning, there were a lot of Fs only and low Cs, and now we have a more or less balance between F, full, and C, only for customs issues. This is because, um, yeah, the customs regulations, for example, for bonded warehouses and such alike, was very tightly bound at some countries uh, to the IO concept. Um, you see here the devel development of those companies who are actually at that time IOs. So there are some of them dropped out in the meantime. Um, you see here there was a hate in 2011. This was at that time where uh, IOC got more important. And you see on the other hand, uh, on the right hand side, you see the, uh, the accumulation. So we are about with uh, close to 12,000 in the database. But coming to my main objective, it's Austria. Um, Austria, you see here the red, um, the red country. Small but long, actually, I always say. And uh, when it comes on, for example, so, uh, yeah. When it comes on the, on the spatial distribution, you can see here the figures. It's, for example, the hotspots in, in Austria when it comes on IO certifications are Vienna and Salzburg. That's um, very meaningful because there are a lot of freight forwarding companies there and uh, also some, at least some activity of manufacturing companies. Um, end of 2013, there were about uh, two, where 249 IO holders registered, which I almost could acquire data for all of them. 
I just missed out a small customs house progress you will see in the, in the next slide. Well, initially, it was also the case, like in all European countries, IOF was the most choice, the first, and then uh, nowadays we have uh, still more IOFs than IOCs um, in, the, in the sample. And there's only one company who got IOS at Austria. Here you see also the, uh, the population. So IO certificates on the left-hand side and which year they acquired. So there is not so much a peak than in the overall European um, view. And on the right-hand side, you see also development, so cumulated. So you can see that maybe, or you can expect, if you take the data and compare the data from Austria to, um, to the overall European level, that Austrian companies were on average a little bit more eager to go for I.O. But to be honest, 250 companies are not so much. Yeah? This is at the moment my, my results. So um, you see here, for example, we have, I have grouped them by NAS code. So it's HS coding, yeah? so to four digits about economic activity, main economic activity. We can, uh, we can distinguish between commodities, there's also the energy sector in, uh, so also about oil and so on. Um, then we have manufacturing, we have uh, wholesales and retail business, we have transport logistics business, with all the service providers included there, and service industry, it's mainly about uh, electronics, um, um, telematics, and so on. There are quite a few companies at Austria uh, situated. If you look on them, you see it's quite evident that um, manufacturing has a big share of the pie when it comes to I.O. So it's not only about service providers applying for it, but a lot of companies actually are applying for I.O. Um, and got it granted, of course. Yeah. When, he, when we look, for example, in the second line, we see the I.O. since when they are on average. Um, it's uh, especially the transport logistics provider were a little bit more eager to, uh, to apply for and got granted. Um, closely followed by the manufacturing companies. The others, I would not say that they are more eager, the service companies, for example, more eager, but actually when you have about uh, six observations, you cannot say whether they, are, whether they are faster or not, or eager to um, apply for. What is also interesting is about if, you, if we compare these companies on these four-digit levels with the companies on average at Austria. Yeah? So I, I, I just, uh, just got data from Statistik Austria, which has general data uh, available. And I just compared them. And if you see, you see always in parentheses, the averages from the group of this four-digit uh, activity level. And you can very easily see that in every instance, or mostly in the instances, is the companies are bigger in, on average. Yeah? have higher turnovers, have more employees. So the smaller companies are not so eager to do this. Yeah? Um, and then a, a last, a last, the last two lines are dedicated to average quotas in export and import. They are provided, so a really easy going figure. Um, you see, okay, and in, in the case of transport uh, logistic service providers, there is no data available, of course. Uh, uh, they are well, they don't have such an export import quota. Either you are international or national. Most of the companies are international. When they ask for it, they always say, we are international. Yeah? Um, so when we look on this, especially on the manufacturing sector, we see here striking 81% on average uh, export quota. So what I, what I feel really is that our companies, and they were just going through the the list of the companies who are IO, F or C, IO, they are, I would say, the best of the best of the exporting, heavily export-oriented company at Austria. Austria is a very small country and we are making a lot of things which would you not believe. For example, there's one company, 
or as a part of a larger group, they make ship cranes at Vorarlberg. So you see left and the right, you see the mountains, you see a small river, and they're making the deck cranes for ships. This is a 100% export quota. Another company at uh, Vienna, until recently, they produced, for example, the microphones for mobile phones. They had a big, a huge experience in that. And now they are, yes, well, they're relocating their manuf manufacturing now to China too. Yeah. But these are, for example, companies uh, who are really export-oriented. And those, they seem to, be, so seem to benefit most of. So it's not as um, VCO safe framework and also the publication of VCO said or proposed that also small companies could apply for, yes, but I do not do for maybe, I don't know, structural reasons, yeah, the costs. Actually, this will be subject to my further inquiry. So this is my, my conclusions. At Austria, IOF is more appreciated than IOC. For all industry sectors, IOs tend to be larger companies, especially at Austria. Transport logistics service provider were on average early movers in getting an IO status compared to others. Could be that they maybe were pushed by, the by their clients to do this, or feel that they are pushed. IO holders among Austrian uh, manufacturers are very export-oriented ones. Commodity, wholesale, retail companies have better foreign trade balance would say this is here, so you have export import quota is close to 50%, so it's more, more or less balanced, so there's an inland market, there's an export orientation, import orientation. Of course, we have outliers, so there are some companies who are only importing, and there are others who are only exporting. Yeah? Back, back. So, um, Last but not least, um, the data set contains some commodity wholesale retail firms where company profits are really abnormal high. So I have companies, for example, in Assemble, one person makes six million euros. Yeah? And looking closely to that, this is just a management company of a larger group. So there is a problem, some problem, of course, in the data that larger holding groups I cannot uh, distinguish between them. Also, I can say, yes, that's a part of the group, but what they did with the profit shifting, I cannot say, yeah. So this was it all for the first, and yes. So thank you for your attention, and well, questions are welcome. Thank you very much indeed, um, Joachim. For